Today, I'm honored to sit with Stanley Mbiza. Stanley comes from a family of tradesmen, and he's got 25 years of mechanical work behind him, hands-on tools, 17 years post-qualified experience, fixing everything from half ton to 34 tons, large diesel engines, clutches, brakes, overhauls, repairs on site, axles on the breakdowns, off on the field. Is that correct, uh, Stanley? Yes, that's very correct. I formally qualified as a diesel mechanic in uh, 2005. Um, and uh, I had also informal trainings under health and safety compliance, basic firefighting course, um, uh, first aid treatment in the workplace, and basic spill control course. This was related to my foreman uh, deliverables, which I was implementing them in the uh, position. As a diesel mechanic, he was doing those kind of jobs when I was watching him. And uh, the joy that I saw in him when he was, um, I mean, uh, coming right with the challenges that he was facing or when he was fixing things right. That inspired me because I could see that uh, the joy in him as well when he, when, he, when he came right. So I was inspired and with him also working, I was also working with him when I was 15. So he was, he was training me as well. So with that, seeing that you can do something challenging and come right, so it, it 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 really inspired me. So when you started working for him, do you remember some of the first things that he was asking you to do? Yes, I still remember. Uh, the, at first, when I started with him, he could just give me small tasks, uh, like doing a service, servicing with him, showing me how to do a service like stripping, show me how to strip. When you're stripping the engine, there's a proper way of stripping. So it did show me those ways how to strip and how to, when you're stripping, how to pick the things right. So that the next person, when he comes, even if you are not there, if that person is a mechanic, will know exactly what's happening. You don't just leave things scattered. So he was a standards kind of a guy. Yes. I can do uh, most of the, the work. I can do engine overhauls. I can do suspensions. I can do clutch overhauls, do cells, uh, diff repairs, hypoid and hub reductions. I can do basic auto electrical. I can diagnose as well. I can work with various vehicles as well, uh, depending on the, because the standards are the, the basics are the same. Basics are the same. So if we yeah. take the and most... and I can also use special... Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can also use uh, special tools such as torque wrenches, uh, dial gauges. Uh, I can say a lot of like this workshop special tools. I can, I, I'm able to use them. All right. Some of the special tools are the diagnosis, di diagnosis tools. Yes, I can, I, can, I can use, I'm able to use the diagnosis machine. And um, the engine overhaul, would you say, is that the most difficult thing? Most, um, takes most time and, and, and uh, effort? Uh, on the engine overhaul, I, I cannot say it's the most difficult okay. because uh, I know they are challenging. It's, it's not as difficult like we say it's difficult, but you have to know exactly what, what you are doing, what you are looking at, and why does this thing fit this way or fit that way? You have to know the, the directions or the how you fit the parts. Because if, if it's, it looks easy, but if you don't fit those things correctly, it's a very sensitive thing inside the engine. There's a lot of things happening inside it. What's happening yes. here? And explain breakdowns. How is that? 
responsibility for you? How did you how did you manage breakdowns? And maybe you can start with what what's happening in this picture. Okay, so in that picture, I was on road where the vehicle was making uh, the, the 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 engine was not sounding smooth, and the driver reported that there's a funny sound coming from the engine. So as soon as I got there, I started the vehicle. And with the experience, I could tell that the tappets were loose. So I had to remove the tappet cover, as you can see, it's open there, and do the valve clearance and set and reset the tappets. So after that, after I reset the tappets, everything was fine. So this is a case where you're on call and there was a breakdown and it was your turn to go out. Is that the right scenario? Yes, that week I was on standby week on standby okay then you go and you 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 don't know what's exactly happening all the time but uh how's the process work from the point you get the call what happens next let's talk about the breakdown uh strategy of stanley so you first get the call what do you do and let's go through the whole process so when i get the phone call about the breakdown i i, go, I get the, con the phone call from the controllers the fleet controllers. Mm. So the driver will report the breakdown to the controllers and the location and the, all the breakdown details. So the controller will then phone and say, there is a breakdown. Maybe it's on the on the highway. The, and, 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 and they will just mention the defect as well. Okay, sound uh, uh, coming from the engine, bad sound coming from the engine. Then as a mechanic now, take my phone, phone the driver. Then from the driver, I should be able now to tell or maybe think what, what can I carry because based on, on the driver's information. So I'll ask the driver what's happening like this. He told me, you know, <clears throat> there's a sound, bad sound coming from the engine. The engine is sounding rough. So what I did now, I just... Uh, carried what I could carry because now that was a difficult one because if you say the engine is sounding rough, I don't know whether something snapped and it's just knocking on the side or maybe the engine itself failed. So there I had to go with basic things. I carried my oil, I carried my uh, antifreeze, I carried a water pump, I carried pulleys because I thought maybe it could be the pulleys. So when I got there, I opened the cab check everything i checked my pulleys i checked the oil level i checked everything was fine then i knew it was safe now to start the engine i even went to an extent to check the table if everything was fine so i started the engine then it was sounding like with the clicking sound of the tappets with the experience i could tell now something is wrong with it uh, in, inside the tappet cover so after that, I had to open the tappet cover only to find out that the tappets were loose. There was nothing wrong with the engine. <laughs> only the tappets were loose. Ah, uh, great. So I did those tappets. The vehicle drove without issues. There was no problem at all. Okay. You just listed out some protocol, some standards. Uh, you checked uh, many things to make sure it was safe before you started it. Where did you get that idea or where was the training for that level of, 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 of compliance or standards? Uh, I can say this training, uh, I got it from, from a lot of, I mean, points because as my father also was teaching me, he taught me to observe and you, when you're starting the vehicle, for example, I'll start from there before I go back to the question. Um, when you when you when you start when you when you're working on the vehicle or before you start the vehicle, you must check if the oil is all right, if the water level is okay, all those basic, basic things you must check before you just start the vehicle. Even your personal vehicle, you have to check those things. So from there, this when I when I feathered my career. It was also there, I was finding that standard. So from there with the experience now, with this situation, I had to implement that to say, no, there was, there was a problem with the engine. So before I start that engine, there was a sound. I didn't start it yet, 
But let me check this, this and that according to my knowledge to make sure it's safe to start it before I, maybe I'll start it already. Maybe it's, the engine is gone already. So I checked everything that I, I, I thought it's, it's in line with that, with that fault only to find out that I can start it now. It was turning freely. Yeah. Then I, I had to start it then. Then that, that's when I found out that the tablets were loose. Then I, I had to set the tablets. Yeah. So these standards are not something that your employer required. This is something that you developed as your own standards. Yes. I see. Interesting. How many total callouts have you been on in your career so far? Um, the callouts, I can say, with the numbers now, when we, are we referring to the last uh, company where I was, or I, I guess I guess all the callouts. Just would you have? It can be a rough estimate, or or if you like the last uh, place, whatever is easiest. No, uh, the rough uh, the rough estimate the callouts. I can say roughly the whole of my career. I can say. An estimate, 700, 800. Training 12 trainees to become qualified technicians. It's it's not a it's not a, a job. It, it's quite a good a, a great achievement because I've improved someone's life, and I hope where they are, they they are very proud of me. And I'm very happy because one of them is in Australia now. And it's doing very well. Great. Uh, yeah. And then uh, I'm also happy that I I brought in a new work with a, within, a, within a big company, something that wasn't done there. I managed to convince the, the management to allow me to bring something new, whereas I was a technician. That wasn't an easy thing to, to convince them. And then... Uh, the experience that I got, like good example, I can say when I dealt with that Excel on the road, managed, I achieved to, I mean, my that's as an, an achievement to say, I can I can work, I could work with the uh, limited resources, which is an experience. I, I can say it's an achievement because it's something that trained me very well, where now I can say, we, regardless of the situation, I can work with whatever I have. To, to put the vehicle back on the road. And uh, also I can say the hours that I brought to Palo World, regardless of the numbers, I added some something, I improved the productivity, which was very beneficial to, to the operational side and to the workshop as well. And to my teammates that got some knowledge also in building the engines and the diffs that I was doing there. And uh, being appointed also to the position of workshop foreman, actually getting to a point where I felt comfortable in those shoes, this was unexpected as well. I can say roughly around, I can say 10,000 billable hours for the, from where, since when I started. I don't know what, what they charge per hour for diesel uh, fleet mechanic diesel work technicians and uh, how it would be divided between a trailer let's say it's a it's a, maybe it's a hundred dollars so uh ten thousand uh a hundred would probably be the minimum uh ten thousand you're, you're at a million dollars it's ama amazing i can fix vehicles from 0 0.5 tons to up to the largest one 34 tons I can do engine overhauls and clutch overhauls. I can also do um, drive excels, which is planetary and high port excels. I can manage myself in all these and um, so diverse in terms of my, my management hands on tools. I've also trained 12 apprentices to tradesmen and 20 more who are not yet qualified, which I'm hoping they'll qualify soon and uh, got the ability to work, train, even bring in new business to a company. I'm a standards kind of guy. I approach things in a systematic way. 
um, I can bring this system mentally uh, with energy and passion to New Zealand employee employ to the New Zealand employer as well. Yeah, I, I'm I'm sure you've got great skills. What about your starting point? Uh, if an employer sees that you've got these skills as manager, but would like you to start purely hands on without uh, managing anyone, would that be an okay starting point for you? Are you willing to do that? Yeah, I'm. I'm happy to start hands on. I think it's a great start because uh, the New Zealand and where we've been, it's they've got different standards and different cultures and all those things. So re referring to the question, I think it's a good question because to me, I would say it's an advantage to start from the bottom so you understand all the systems and procedures and how they operate. So if you understand all those things now, then you can grow within that environment.